Hello, sweet peeps. How are you guys doing today? Hello, daddy. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and thanks for having me again. Um, been a been a long day. We we're getting ready to start up work, and so getting prepared for that. It's going to be a a good season this year, I think. But um, can't wait to come back down and see you down there. So once we get going work, I should be able to uh, come up with the money and come visit again soon. So, yes. Remember this day? <laughs> I do. I do. It was a day that we were fishing you know, with my family. Yeah, we caught a bunch of little fish. Yes. It was a good day. Yes. It was um, actually close to the, the end of that trip. Yes, yes. It was a good lunch, no? Lunch time. Oh, so good lunch. We ate a lot of fish. Yeah. Oh, so good. I remember catching a lot of little fish. Yes, yes. And I threw... I, I, I pretended I was going to throw you in the water. <laughs> yes, yes. You yes, can yes. see I ate too much fish right there, right in the belly area. <laughs> they are all swimming there. They're like piranhas. Four fish. <laughs> you guys have piranhas? Yes. Uh -huh. Do you like no, they eat you. No, like, but uh, <laughs> yes, but you can, you can have it also, no. Oh. As a food, you know. Yes, I'm yeah. sure you can eat them instead of them eat you. You're saying, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had, never had piranha. <laughs> They're pretty small, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Maybe a little bigger. But um, yeah. So we're excited to get these new words. Um we're on day three of five, I'm assuming, yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Okay. I'm excited. Let's do it. Yes, let's go on, yes, in our idioms. Yes, that is the third class already. It was until the number six to one. So now we can go from 62, yes? In our third class. I'm okay. excited to learn some more idioms. So we yes. say idioms. Yes, and you... Native people love using phrasal verbs, love using advanced adjectives, and you love using idioms, I know. And now you're going to learn uh, the sequence of 150 common idioms, and native speakers love to use. And now throughout this section, you're going to see the idiom and you can understand the meaning. Uh, you can see some examples in sentences and you can see pictures to really help you to remember those idioms. Let's get started to the number 62 then. Yay, 62, come rain or shine. So to say, come rain or shine is like, sometimes we'll use that first. Um, we work no matter what, rain or shine. Um, we'll get it done no matter what, rain or shine. Just saying that um, it's going to get, it's coming no matter what. <clears throat> Go ahead, Sop. Yes, yes. Come rain or shine. Yes, come rain or shine. Yes, this is used to say that 
an event will take place despite external circumstances. So let's say tomorrow is a vacation day for you, but there's a big project deadline tomorrow. But you might say, I'm taking the day off tomorrow, come rain or shine. And to the next, Daddy. Yes, yeah, so number 63, to cut corners. So to basically, we're, that's saying um, shortcuts, making shortcuts. Uh, like, when I'm driving sometimes um, and the road is curvy, but I can see way ahead, I'll just drive straight through the curves and that's cutting corners. So that's making shortcuts. But yeah, just taking the easiest route, the fastest route possible. Pretty, pretty good one. Yes, go ahead, Saw. Yo, great, huh? Yes, to cut corners. This is when you do something in the cheapest, easiest, or fastest way, but by omitting something or by not think following rules. So you might say, we felt pressured to cut corners because of the tight deadline. And the next. <laughs> That's a funny picture. I can see myself right there. Number 64. <laughs> but that was with tacos. Oh, my. Yeah. To get your act together. Yes. To get your act together. Now, that's someone that your parents used to say to you probably when you were younger. <laughs> Pull yourself together. And get your act together. And get back to work. For sure, yeah. Yeah. When you're when you're not behaving or in a proper way around family or in you, where you're at in your environment, they would say, get your act together. We are not in a proper place. We're in the public. So yeah, they'd say, get your act together. You need to get it together. Go ahead, Saw. Yes, exactly that. Uh, great, good examples to get your act together. So your parents might say to you or your siblings or someone you know, you're 30 and you still live at home and you don't have a job. You need to get your act together you need to organize yourself so you can live in an effective and efficient way get your act together yes next like that fat guy with the we we controller in his hand get your act together bud oh. <laughs> So, to break the ice, number 65. Yeah, something that um, all guys need to do when they go to talk to a lady. I know that. But I like I like it. Um, yeah, so something that you got to come up with just to get the conversation going with somebody. And when you first meet somebody, to break the ice is to, yeah, come up with a conversation piece to, to be able to get going with that person. Uh, yeah, because it's pretty nerve-wracking when you meet someone for the first time and trying to talk to them. To know what to say when you first meet them is the tough one. Yes, yes. So yeah. like I would say, I would go up to her and say, do you have any Band-Aids? Because I scraped my knees falling for you. <laughs> oh, uh <-huh. laughs> so go ahead, Saw. Yes. 
to break the ice. Yes, this is such an important one because this is used to help people who don't know each other to feel more comfortable around each other, especially when they're meeting for the first time. Let's break the ice by introducing ourselves and sharing something interesting about ourselves. Wonderful. Mm, next, thank you. Mm, clear as mud. You know, I don't know this one very much. Um, no. But it, it makes sense. Clear as mud, yeah. So, we would say clear as day for a clear, so I, I guess clear as mud for uh, something that's hard to understand. So clear as day would be like, it's pretty obvious, you know, it's clear as day. To You know what to do, it's clear as day. But clear as mud, yeah, that one's a good one. I've never used that. I'm going to start using that one. So something that's not obvious, something that's, you can't understand or see as well as something obvious. So yeah, go ahead, Saul. No, uh huh. Good. Eh? Not used so used for for you yet. So clear as mud. This is used to say that some something is very difficult to understand. So if somebody uh gave you instructions but their instructions didn't make any sense at all they ask you so is everything okay do you understand you can say clear as mud which tells uh the person you do not understand at all. Perfect. And next. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. I want to be there. Oh, is that my island? That's our island. Yes. <laughs> Number 67, crystal clear. So yeah. So clear. Yeah, this one's so a good amazing. One. Perfect. It came right after clear as mud. Yes, yes. We get to clean ourselves off. Reminds me Captiva Island. Mm -hmm. So clear as that crystal clean water also. Wow, I want to go. Yes, I could see them fish so amazing mm -hmm. in Florida. Close to Fort Myers. Oh, go diving. So, yes, yeah. crystal clear, something that's pretty obvious uh where you can something that is pointing right in your face so if you miss it that snake would bite you um yeah very clear means yeah crystal clear go ahead saw mm -hmm. good yes uh so have you ever gone in some uh some place like that that it, you remember? Yes, in uh, Mexico. Oh, in Mexico, yeah. Yeah, down in uh, Cozumel. Mm. It's an island in the Caribbean. Oh, great. Yeah, we, uh, I, I dove down in the, down in that waters and yeah the fish will swim right by your face it's pretty cool oh great so cool yes i i don't know yet mexico no not, not yet cool. but we we can go also but yeah, there are so many places amazing place to go and then we'll sneak across the border <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, let's do it. I'm kidding. <laughs> yes. 
Okay, yes. Eh, we can we can do it. Eh? We don't have to sneak. We can walk right across. They let us. <laughs> Crystal clear. Yes, something is very clear and easy to understand. His instru instructions were crystal clear. Next. Oh, number 68, to rock the boat, to make something unstable or making waves is also, you could say, making waves. Um, talking, talking shit or uh, making problems with other people in the work group or with your coworkers is making waves or rocking the boat. So yeah, by starting problems with a uh, room um, or a coworker, which can cause him to go say something, the next person to go say something, basically, you know, causing waves. So go ahead, or rocking the boat, I should say. Go ahead, Sa. Oh, yes, great. Yes, to rock the boat. Yes, this is when you do or say something that could upset people or cause problems. Don't rock the boat until the negotiations are done. So don't say anything that could upset someone or that could uh, cause problems until we sign the deal. And then you can cause problems if you want to, to do this negotiation. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> I was, what? <laughs> yeah, that was funny. You were just the top. You said Ricky. It's got to be but done. I was talking about Am I sleeping? <laughs> yes. So, Not yeah, um... <laughs> just 1 a.m. It's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're adorable. To get out of hands. So, something to get out of hand, something that's coming out of control. Um, like we, we have wildfires here during the summer and they get out of hand, something that they can, can't control anymore. You have to just sit back and let it burn until they can gain control. So when the winds pick up, it will make it get out of hand. Um, your children sometimes get out of hand and you just got to slap them upside the head. No, just kidding. <laughs> when, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when your wife gets out of hand, you tell her to get the road, go for a walk. No. Uh, or when we get out of hand, the ladies slap us in the head. No, just getting out of hand. Just kidding. They're all jokes. <laughs> so, go ahead, Saw. Yes, yeah, so to get out of hand... This is used to, uh, f uh, to describe what, <laughs> to describe what, uh, to get out of hand. Yes, this is another way of saying to get out of control, which means you no longer have control over a situation. You could say the party got out of hand, which means you were no longer able to control it. The party got out of hand and some uh, valuables were broken. Next. Oh, darling, you need a nap. You're tired. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um number 70 a bad apple someone that is a bad apple is that always has negative attitude at work or in the in the group 
And usually one bad apple turns into a bunch of bad apples. So just like if you have one bad apple in a bunch, it'll make all of them go bad. It does the same thing at work or in a group of people. When you have one negative person, you got to take them out of the, the bunch before it becomes a problem. And everyone becomes a bad apple. Mm, yes. yes. Go ahead, Sal. Yes, great. A bad apple. We use it even in Brazil. So a better corrupt person in a group. We could say there are a few bad apples in the company. Next. Yes. Do you think anyone ever realizes that it's them that's the bad apple? Yeah. They got to know it, right? Mm -hmm. If they're the bad apple, do you think they realize that they're the bad apple? In the group? You got, you, I, would, I know it. I know when I'm a bad apple, I'm being grumpy or irritable. <laughs> yes. Everybody goes through it, but some people just never get out of it and so oh, yes. i will i will go back i'm ready yes yes not not too good as should be a bad apple no or to never. be a bad apple <laughs> close never to a <laughs> bad apple but we all have our moods oh yes for sure just like women have their week of the month men have them too just not with all the packages. Mm -hmm. Number yeah. 71. To cut to the chase. To get to the point. Right? To cut to the chase. Let's... Uh, yeah, just getting to the point. We got to, this is what we got to take, talk about. Let's, let's stop beating around the bush and cut to the chase. Um, we don't need to be cutting corners, just cut to the chase and talk, uh, deal with what we got to deal with right now. So, yeah, just making a point, going straight to the point. Go ahead, Saul. Yes, great. Good example, Saul. So, to cut to the chase, this is when you only talk about the most important points of a subject or topic so if you are running out of time in the meeting you might say we're running out of time so i will cut to the chase i will only say the most important point next Perfect. Thank you. Ooh, number 72, to come in handy. I would say I'm not sure what the picture's got to do with come in handy other than the umbrella. Because it looks like he's got a bag of Doritos. And I don't think it's coming in handy in this situation. But, yeah, to be useful to, to have something on hand that... Um, always comes in handy like a pocket knife uh -huh. or um i i usually carry a leatherman which is pliers a knife and scissors and it has a few other gadgets on it which is handy to have um i would say that umbrella is probably pretty handy to have on a rainy day um yeah tools any tools are usually come in handy spoon fork. Yes. I think they're pretty handy. <laughs> yes. They come in handy. Go ahead. Yes, good. So to come in handy. Yes, this is used when something is very useful for a specific purpose. So if it's pouring rain outside, you might say an umbrella would come in handy. An um, umbrella would be very useful in this particular situation. Next. Yes. 
Oh, yes. I was going to say this one uh, earlier when we were doing to reinvent the wheel. Oh, yes. Yeah, we say this quite a bit. Um, something that you would say when some people say it to me when I'm trying to because I'm an I'm a, I'm an innovator, which someone that likes to solve problems or make things faster or easier. And people would say, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. And I'm like, no, I'm just trying to make it easier on everybody. So yeah, it's someone that uh is overthinking something or over uh, trying to overdo it on something they that's taking them longer than it should. So, yes. Go ahead, Saw. Great. Good examples. Yeah, so, uh, exactly that to reinvent the wheel. Yes. This is when you waste time trying to recreate something that someone, somebody else has already created. So let's say you ask your boss, should I create a presentation for the conference? And your boss suggests using last year's presentation. It's already created. And your boss can add, don't reinvent the wheel. So we often use this idiom in the negative. Next. Yeah, definitely in the negative usually. <laughs> uh -huh. Um. Yeah, yeah. Number seventy-four. Yeah. The thing is, is um. We have to come up with new ideas. I mean, that's how we move forward in life. If you didn't, we'd still have a stone wheel, right? We're, we made it at least to the rubber. So someone has reinvented the wheel many, many times. <laughs> yes. Just a different version of it. So, all right. Number 74. To go yeah. with the flow. To go with traffic. Um, the, yeah, so going the same way with everyone else. Stop going backwards when everyone's going forward. Uh, you're going against the flow means one person's going the wrong way and everyone's going the right way. Or everyone else is going the wrong way and you're going the right way, but you're still going against the flow. <laughs> so you want to turn around, go the wrong way with everybody else. Just kidding. So yeah, to go with the flow, to make sure everything's smooth, flowing. Okay, so? Yeah, it's great. For sure, everybody could already understand. Yes, so to go with the flow. When you go with the flow, it means that you do what other people are doing or you agree with the opinion of others, the majority. So let's say you're having a company dinner and you originally wanted to have burgers, but the majority of people say they want pizza. So you can go with the flow and have a pizza instead of burgers because that's what the majority wants. Next. Yeah. That one was clear as day, yes. Clear, crystal clear. Crystal clear, yes. Yeah. Oh, to be skating on thin ice. Yes, this is uh, some employees that we've had. We actually still have one that's, um, he's on thin ice. So walking on eggshell, no, that's not the same thing. So skating on thin ice means that you are just about to be fired. So one more mistake. My parents used to say, boy, you're skating on thin ice. Because I was pushing it to the limits. No. Getting too close to be getting myself in trouble. Yes. So, yeah. Go ahead, Sal. Yes, great. That should be skating on thin ice. Good examples, Daddy. 
Yes, this is when you, uh, so when you are doing something that is dangerous or involves risks. He's skating on thin ice by lying to his wife. It involves risk. It's dangerous. Don't do it. Next. Yeah, that's very, that's, that's past skating on thin ice by lying to his wife. He he's already made it to the lion's den, but he's doing that. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, for sure. Uh, number 76, a silver lining. This is a good thing. This is a positive, yes. When um, something, oh, how do you? Yeah, so when like, oh, go ahead, Saw. I can't think of it right now. Yeah? <laughs> My brain's broken. Okay, so a silver, silver lining. Yes, this is when uh, something is positive that comes from something negative. So the pandemic is negative, right? But is there anything positive? A silver lining? Maybe we could say one silver lining of the pandemic is that it made us realize how important our relationships are with friends and family. Next. Oh, excuse me. Um, good job. Yeah, I couldn't come up with something right off the head. Yes. Perfect. Silver lining, yes. Uh, number 77, to have a sweet tooth. Um, I always said sweet tooth. It was, I've been saying it wrong my whole life. Go ahead. Just someone who likes eating sweet food. If they, or you put it wrong, sweet tooth. Yes, yes, uh -huh. tooth. <laughs> Tooth, yeah, a sweet tooth. Um, to, yeah, when you're when you're craving something sweet, or you like a lot of sweets, you have a sweet tooth. Um, I would say, man, I feel like something sweet, so I'm having a. Um, I need to hear my sweet tooth. You can go ahead. Yes, good, good yeah. job. So to have a sweet tooth, yes, uh, a tooth. So yeah, it's not there. No, to have a sweet tooth on the bottom, it is right there above the cupcake. It says sweet tooth. So <laughs> yeah, this is when somebody likes sweet foods, especially chocolate. So if some people offer me desserts, generally I say no because I don't like sweet food. So I can say, no, thank you. I don't have a sweet tooth, which means I don't really like sweet food. Yes, I, I used to be a salty person. I liked salty foods and now I have a sweet tooth. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> yes. After to know me? Yes. I thought I don't like it, but I really like <laughs> I've been down Brazil. Like and now I like sweets a lot more. I don't know. I think Brazil brought out the sweet tooth in me. <laughs> From all the fruit down there, probably. So, uh, yeah. By the way, being salty I'm means... A, I'm a choco chocoholic person. So. Chocoholic, yes. Alcoholic. Yes, perfect. Um, but to call someone salty is to call someone uh, rude or always grumpy 
or mean or angry. You know, someone that's salty, just uh, kind of, you know, if you think about it, sweet, a sweet person, they're kind. A salty person, they're not kind. So you could call them salty. That just that just came to mind anyway. So anyways. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I listen about. Also. Yeah. Gosh, I'm being real salty today. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys say that? Yes, yes. Mm, good, good. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, number 78, to go Dutch. You know, I heard this before, but I don't know what it means. To agree to share the cost of something, especially a meal. To go Dutch. Yeah, I've never actually heard that one. I mean, I've heard it, but I we never really actually... I don't know. Actually, I don't know if I've ever heard that. We just say split the meal. <laughs> split the bill. Yeah, I split um, the bill. Uh -huh. Yeah. I no, know that. All. Yeah, I've never done yes. that one. No. Uh -huh. Oh, you have never, yes. No, Dutch oven is the only thing I've ever heard, but that's disgusting, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, to go this, uh, Dutch. To go Dutch. Yeah, the Dutch oven is when someone farts under the blanket and then they put the the blanket over their spouse's head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, that is disgusting. <laughs> that is disgusting, but it's funny. <laughs> I can see you doing it to me. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yes. So to go Dutch, yes, when you share the cost of something, especially a meal. So let's say you're having a dinner with a friend, family member, even a romantic partner, and they say, I will pay for the meal. And you could say, no, 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 let's go Dutch which means you're going to divide the cost 50-50 to make it end. Oops. Actually, is that? <laughs> Go Dutch, 50-50. You, <laughs> you, uh, you told, I will pay the full account and I told you, let's go Dutch. I didn't use this, this idiom, but I, I told you, you know. Oh, yeah. I paid, but you, no, I will pay that. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, we don't use that one very often. Okay. Huh, number 79. Oh, I hope, I can't wait to do a Dutch oven on you. Number 79, to make ends meet. Um. Yeah, to pay your bills, uh, to make enough money to, to pay your bills. Uh, I need I need to uh, work because I have to make ends meet. Um, ends ends is another term for money. Um, you'd say my ends. We don't usually say it a lot, but it's just another. I don't even know where it comes from, but ends yeah another way of saying money. But to make ends meet, you have to have just enough money to pay the bills. Um. But yeah, go ahead, Sa. Can't hear you, darling. Can't hear you. No, for sure not. <laughs> nope, couldn't hear you. Second time I do that, no? Yes. Less time and now again. So, uh, yes, good job uh, to make ends meet. This is when you have just enough money to pay for the for essential items. You might say, with food prices increasing, we're barely making ends meet. 
next. Yes. Just another way of saying uh, you have all your bills, so you just have enough money to pay every bill. And you're, it's, it's a bummer to live like that. I hate that. Too yeah. Yes. Sure. I don't like that's, living that's check good paper. It's never fun. I like to have money in the savings. A backup parachute. Safety plans. So number 80. Yes. A bell. Uh, to quit or to call it a day. Um, what you got there when something a name or place information is familiar to you. Oh yes. All right. So instead of that, not scratch it. We're not ringing the bell yet. <laughs> so that's another way of saying I quit. Though it is. But um, now I see what you got. Yeah, that rings a bell when you would say like, um, remember that place with the tree in the shade that we had lunch? I said, no, that doesn't ring a bell. You got to be a little more specific. <laughs> or you remember that church with the beautiful pane glass? And I said, oh, yeah, that rings a bell. I remember that. So, yeah, by saying something or making, bringing up a memory. Uh, even songs ring the bells a lot, especially when uh, when you were younger. It brings back a lot of little memories when you're a kid. But music, music really brings back the memories. Oh, yes. Yes. And they make for me also. But I guess you wouldn't say ringing a bell when you're listening to music. Or you could say that really rung my bell when you get hit upside the head. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, we say that rung my bell when you tongue with a hammer or something on the head. Or when you stand on, up underneath the counter and the cabinet door is open above you. That hurts so bad. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. You know, when the door is open on the cabinet above you and you're underneath and you stand up and yes. you hit that cabinet door that's above your head oh it just that's drops you back down i'm sure you've done it yes owie <laughs> yeah owie. Owie, 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 owie. that was the worst <laughs> in an owie that one's an ow <laughs> with a whole lot of us <laughs> yes. you gotta watch it with both say kids. ow I are out. I not I. out. <laughs> it was funny because when I first started here and you guys said I, I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, son. Are we? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, to ring a bell, uh, this is when something, uh, usually a person, a place, or information is familiar to you. So let's say you're having a conversation with a co-worker and they say, oh, have you met Fred from accounting? And you think, Fred, Fred from accounting that doesn't ring a bell yes next yeah <clears throat> oh that's a beautiful picture yeah so that's real <laughs> um yes so something yeah the tip of the iceberg so you would say man today's rough at work and it's only the tip of the iceberg, meaning that there's so much more coming. Um, yeah, you're just at the beginning of this and you're like, man, I'm almost done. I gotta, I wanna quit. But, it, but it's only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, something um, bigger than what, or yeah, something bigger than what it seems to, to be. Uh, uh, 
it's here. And uh, uh, whatever's coming. So yes, yeah, go ahead and solve that. My brain's broken too, darling. <laughs> okay, okay, the top iceberg. This is uh, when you uh, is a small part of a much bigger problem. This is small local protests are just the tip of the iceberg. Next. Oh, that's a funny picture. To blow off some steam, number 82. To um, let out some anger. Like, I used to have to split firewood. I guess you guys would know it. Fire, you guys don't have firewood, so. But um, yeah, to split firewood, uh, to blow off steam, to get out some anger or issues. Go for a walk and go blow off some steam, as someone would say to you. If you're just feeling angry or upset or frustrated, I need to go blow off some steam. So you go for a jog or, yeah, my favorite was those split firewood because you put all that anger and that ups, um, frustration into swinging the axe into the wood. So it, it worked great. You go ahead, Saul. Yes, great. Good example. So to blow up steam. This is when you say or do something that helps you really easy. It's strong feelings or strong energy. A strong emotion. After our fight, I went for a long, for a long walk to blow off steam. So when you were on that walk, you were able to calm down, to release that negative energy. And the next. Did the smoke look like um, middle fingers? Did yeah. you see that? Yeah, it looked like two middle fingers pointing in their ears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like blow off some steam. Yeah, or it looks like feathers and it looks like it's doing this. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. She don't look very angry to me. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> let's go to the next one. Mm hmm yeah. My computer's not charging. I don't know why. Oh, really? Hopefully I don't run out of battery. Uh, number 83, a piece of cake. Something that's easy to get done. Hey, can you go um mow that lawn? And I'd say, oh, yeah, no problem. That's a piece of cake. Something that's easy to get done. Something, no problems. Go ahead. Yes, yes, a piece of cake. Yes, yeah, something that is ex extremely easy. That exam it was a piece of cake. Next. Ah, uh, to be out of the woods. Something that you're going through that's pretty tough. Uh, like driving in the rain in the dark. And you were like, man, this is getting a little we're, uh, a little easier, but we're not out of the woods yet. So yeah, it's something that it could be getting a little easier, but you know, you're not, it's not over yet. Like the eye of the storm. Mm -hmm. um, when the storm comes in and it's nasty and all of a sudden it calms down and you're like, oh man, it's over. And then someone would be like, no, we're not out of the woods yet. And because you're just in the eye of the storm. Have you seen the eye of the storm before? Mm. Yeah, where I it's just so. really crappy. And all of a sudden it just, it clears up. The sky just clears up. Like all mm -hmm. of a sudden. And, yeah. uh, and then it just turns right back around and just... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's happened a few times I've seen it. <clears throat> and it's pretty crazy because, yeah, it'll just all of a sudden stop blowing. And the skies will clear. 
-hmm. and then you can see the dark come rolling back in but um yeah it's pretty crazy yes not too good at all but yeah something that you're not done with it's it's the problem still there we're not out of the woods yet so go ahead song yes yes to be out of the woods yeah that's when you no longer have a problem or difficulty our profits are increasing but we're not out of the woods next adjective actually idiom h5 what to get over something just get over it saw um yeah telling someone that when they're upset or angry and you say just get over it you know just tell them it's enough get over it and when you're dragging something on or you put to get better after an illness well yeah i guess you could use that one too instead of being angry but if you're yeah if you're getting sick you could say hey it's time to get over it but i think we use that one more for when you're angry at something or someone so <laughs> but you, to get over it to get something no i don't think we use that one too much on the illness go ahead yes great great examples all right so to get over something that is this when you recover from illness it just took me two weeks to get over that cold Yes. yes. Yeah, I think um it's more about getting over it for anger, anger. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. But yes, we use it for that too. It mm -hmm. took me two weeks to get over that illness. Um number eighty six. Not one's cup of tea. Yes. Something that uh you would say uh, I like to go snowboarding, and you'll be like, yeah, that's not really my cup of tea. Something that you don't really like doing, uh, or you're, you're not enthused in it. It's not enjoyable to you. Yeah, that's when you would say, that's not my cup of tea. Okay, so? No great, yes. Okay, not one's cup of tea. This is when you describe a type of, or category that you don't like. Thanks for the invite. But the camping isn't my cup of tea. I don't like that category of activity. Next. Good, good. Man, that's a load of money. Oh, look at her. She's thinking what she could buy. I could see you doing that. What can I buy? Yeah. You're swimming in now that. To be loaded. As Ron White would say, loaded. <laughs> I'm loaded. So to be rich, to have lots and lots and lots and lots of dough, money, moolah, hens, um, cashish, lots of coin. Yes. So yeah, yeah, just being rich, having money. Clear as day on that one, yeah. Can't really explain much more than that. Go ahead, so I want to be loaded. <laughs> That's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be loaded. Yes, just when you are rich. Yes, have a lot of money. I just found out my cousins loaded next. I wish I had a rich uncle that was loaded. <laughs> so, yes. That's a good idea. It's Don't a good idea. But you didn't it tell me yet. It didn't happen on my app. <laughs> We don't have rich family. We weren't smart enough to go into Apple. 
Um, can't blame them though. So anyway, number eighty-eight, eight, eight to nip something in the bud. To to say to nip it in the bud would be to stop it where it before it starts to before it gets too far along. Um. Yeah. So if someone was to say some rude comment to somebody else and you step in and be like, Hey, 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 that's enough. Let's quit that. That's nipping it in the bud. Stopping it before it gets too far. So go ahead. So. Oh, great. Chess. Good examples to nip something in the build to stop something before it has an opportunity to become established. We need to nip this Rumors in the bud before the employees start worrying. Next. So yeah, nip it in the bud. That so that's when it's a picture of that flower it's before it blooms, before it blossoms. Nip it in the bud before it blossoms. Mm -hmm. You know how you say, um, like a, a, if you start something, a rumor, your bloss, it's blossoming into. Um, you don't want to say blossom because usually blossoming means a good thing. <laughs> but that's what it's referring to. Before it blossoms, nip it in the bud now. So that's oh. what it's referring to. Oh, great, Chess. Yes. So go ahead. Well, she looks a little shocked, doesn't she? Yes. <clears throat> Someone just poked her in the ear. Number... 89 out of the blue something that just appears out of the blue is what you'd say um you're like wow sabrina you just showed up out of the blue or you can be like what the heck is that that ship it just showed up out of the blue something just surprisingly just shows up without warning or even gives you uh yeah idea so go ahead so i can't hear you number four yes great out of the blue when something happens out of the blue it happens suddenly and without expecting it my boss gave me a promotion out of the blue, you weren't expecting it. How was some is that? How was some is that? Oh, mm -hmm. that little guy. <laughs> He's adorable. Yeah. Number nine zero. Nine, nine, nine. Two, keep one's chin up. Um, yeah, to, to hold your head up, to don't let your head hang low means, you know, sad or sorrow, being upset is holding your head down. So we tell you to hold your head, keep your chin up, um, hold your head up, uh, keep looking forward to be optimistic, not, not pessimistic. You know those words, optimistic, optimism. Yes, yes. Yeah. Almost. Keep going forward. Stop. Stop moping around. Keep your chin up. Yeah, uh, we would say that to someone if you had broke up with uh, a girlfriend or boyfriend. Keep your chin up. Yeah. Go ahead, Sal. Mm -hmm. Great, a great examples always. To keep one's chin up. This is to remain cheerful in a difficult situation. Because in difficult situations, we tend to put our chin down. But when we are happy, we tend to keep our chin up. For example, I know the economy seems bad, but 
keep your chin up. Yes. Okay. Good for today, yes? Yes. Um, okay. We used to do, in, in school, when we were in grade school, we used to do chin-ups. And that was pull-ups, you know, on a bar. And you'd call them chin-ups. Oh, oh huh. Oh, I do not know. I do not know. Yes, chin ups. But yes, that was great. We did a good job today. Those were some fun ones. Um, yeah. Last ones were a little bit more fun, but we are both a little tired today. I think the weather is kicking both of our butts. Mine's <laughs> bad. It's just hot. We we're rainy today. But thank you again for having me. Uh, I enjoyed uh, hanging out with all of you guys, and I appreciate seeing some of you faces back again. So have yeah. a good evening. Yes. Go yes. Ahead. Almost sleepy. I am. <laughs> My period. <laughs> oh, man. It's rough <laughs> <for me. laughs> So, but it was amazing and to uh, be with one more day here, uh, sharing more and more information, more and more vocabularies, idioms, and uh, with that is company with amazing examples. And uh, uh, he is really creative because you know that it create everything uh, in the class, in the video already. So yeah, that's come up with straight out of my mind. Because I didn't show you before the material. Mm -hmm. Never do. No, sometimes you do. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, because you are good, you don't need it. <laughs> sometimes I could use, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, when it's tough ones, I, I show you before. No? Yes. Hmm. But Great. that means you 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 always have a fast examples to share. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I'm like way up in the sky sometimes, or over here with my brain. I'm trying to think. Uh, what to come up with next? So I like I like it though. It keeps yeah. uh brain working. Because of that, you're a genius. I am a, a genius. <laughs> Innovator. Innovator. But no, I am learning. I'm learning um a lot with all of these these great people. Um because I didn't really take a lot of this in school. I I wasn't good in math and in science, you know. When someone's good in math and in science, I'm sure it's the same down there, they're not good in reading and writing. And then when someone's good at reading and writing, they're not good in math. And it's it's rarely when someone's good at both it's the same down there yeah yes yes mm -hmm. yeah. yes not my my nephews no they are amazing as you know <laughs> all of it if there are uh, more than 10 or you guys use a you no know, they they get <laughs> they're amazing <laughs> wow so they're good at math reading writing and science yes oh everything yeah, that's very right. but i bet you they have a strong point in one or the other yes yes yeah because what is but, your strong point reading and writing yes 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 mm -hmm. yeah that's... i love a's and b's in school and math and in science mm -hmm. but uh yeah this stuff right here was not in my vocabulary. Yes, yes. And a lot of people say, oh, when you're not too good in in math, it, uh, you're good in, in the opposite science, no? Or yes. vice versa. Yes, great. Well, let's, uh, let's hit the sack. The fart sack. Give you a Dutch oven. All right. Bye, everybody. I hope you guys had a good time, and we'll see you tomorrow. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Yes. Put some comments in there if you'd like. We would like to hear some. So we will 
Have a great evening and thanks again for coming. Bye bye. Yes, thank you guys. And uh, yes, don't forget to subscribe. We need to increase our channel. Uh, we are in the beginning yet, but with you, we can go further. Do it. Uh, press like and uh, be with us and comment that we so can bring something else and your interest to help you guys in your studies, in your uh, knowledge of, né, that you want to increase in English language. So we are here for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, uh, share our channel also for who you like, for your friends, for who are interested to learn English. And see you in the next time and have a good time there. Daddy, thanks. I appreciate for everything, your company, everyday company. Yes, we are together to help everybody. Yes, and uh, it's so good always to be with you and to listen to you uh, always explaining something else and uh, giving new information and uh, examples. And uh, I'm thankful for and just see you soon. Yes. Thanks, uh, yes, okay. I appreciate it as well. I enjoy my time with you guys all. So, yeah. Bye bye, people. See you.